Making a variable speed forge blower from a shop vac. William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the owner of Hovey's Knives of China, where we went back to ancient China 3,000 years ago and took some sophisticated cooking knives made out of bronze, and we now use these as inspiration to make knives in central Georgia. I'm also an author. Uh, I've done 18 books, and I have a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, which advocates that you start your own company at any age, any place, any time to raise whatever kind of money you need to use at the moment. I also have a novel in the works, and this is Father of the Grooms. Now, one of the participants in this novel is a Marine Corps officer, and while he is in Bahrain, he purchases and sends home a Giselle, which is a very long rifle, a flintlock, made in Afghanistan and used during the Second Afghan War. And he's going to take this thing home, and he's going to hunt with it. Now, later in the novel, uh, his Sicilian mafia cousins take him boar hunting, and he's going to be outfitted with a Napoleonic musket. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And what we're going to talk about today is a brief video on shop vacs used as air supplies for a charcoal forge. Now, the reason I use a shop vac is just like anybody else who owns one. Yeah, they're awful handy for cleaning up around the shop, and if you do wood turning or metal work, etc., etc., uh, yeah, you pretty well got to have one, and they work very, very well. As most people are familiar, if you go ahead and reverse the hoses and clean out the vac itself, get all the stuff out of it, then yes, you can use it as an air supply to blow things. And that also works very well. Now, in my life, I have owned three of them, two of which are shown here. The first was an original shop vac, intermediate in size between these two. The smaller one here is a five gallon. The larger one here is a 15 gallon. So we have quite a bit of size disparity. The larger one uses, as one might suspect, really huge tools. Hmm. Well, I have a two inch opening on the air duct of my forge. So guess what? With a little modification that I'll show you in a minute, uh, I can adapt the hoses to fit my forge. So that works. One thing that is detrimental about going through from shop vac to shop vac to shop vac is that they have different air outputs. The little bitty fellow here from Harbor Freight is comparatively weak. It will pick up, but not tremendously well. The larger one that I started with originally was more powerful. This one is much more powerful yet, as you might expect from the size of the accessories and the hoses. When we did our last forging with a little small vac here, we couldn't really get the coals and the steel on a fair sized piece of steel up to forge welding temperature. Just couldn't get enough air through it. Well, hence I bought the larger vac. The problem was that it has two speeds, off and full out. Now, full out is fine if you want to generate a lot of heat in a hurry, but it also consumes a lot of fuel to do it. So you don't want to run this thing flat out all the time. You want a way to control it. And there is a way, by the way, Although when I originally broached this idea to an electrical repair shop where I have other things done like 
special cables built and this kind of stuff. Uh, they said you could not change the speed of a single speed engine, which is not true. In fact, uh, hobbyists have been doing this for many decades with their electric trains sets. And Harbor Freight sells a variable control unit. And in particular, it's item 43050, router speed control is what they call it. And uh, so this works very well. For example, uh, the Porter Cable unit here is on but off here. So we'll turn it on. This is on a low setting. But when we turn it up, And that's a very useful feature to have. Now when I built my forge, I had a door built in the back of the base. So by opening that door, that gives me another means of being able to control the airflow through the whole system. And I'll show you the forge and how I have it connected now. Now this is my charcoal forge. Uh, starts off with a tire rim up top. I have it sealed with clay. And then I have a grate in there. Just uh, oh about half inch heavy wire. Its pedestal is a piece of hollow pipe. And then at the bottom you see the door which is both a clean out door as well as an air vent. So right now, uh, a lot of the air going into the forge would actually escape out the other side and comparatively less climb up the pipe and actually work on the charcoal. Viewing now from the other side, you can see the two inch galvanized pipe where I have the air intake. And the problem was of course adapting it to the hose pipe itself. But they did give us several tools, including uh, that pickup tool shown there on the right. So I took my Dremel here and took just a little bit off the threads so this would be a push fit onto here. And that puts on pretty firmly. Then I can take the connection from the air hose here and push it in the other way and seat it. So this way we have the air supply secured. Now of course if I move the forge around on this little dolly then I disconnect the hose but since the forge is stationary during use no, that presents no problem at all. So then, whenever needed, you can turn it off. And you will get airflow through here. As you can perhaps see a little bit when I push the dust around. But yeah, yeah, that works well. So this is how you can get a variable speed air supply on your forge using something you probably already own. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you in the movies. If you wish to see the forge in operation, I have another video about that. 
Now, what we're doing with this forge is we're going to be making some knives for the movie. And here uh, we're making a karambit. And we're using a tiller point as the base of this construction. Attaching a variable speed control enables many machines like grinders to run at lower speeds. So you can use a grinder as an effective buffer for polishing knife blades and other steels. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 750 videos, or even maybe to make a donation to the channel, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For more information on my knives, uh, you can go to Hovey's Knives of China, blog.co. To find out more about my novel, Father of the Grooms, and how you can actually read the book chapter by chapter, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless. See you in the movies.